This week we're going to look at the top section of the Synchrodyne. So far we've already covered the VCO, and in the previous video we talked about how a PLL, or Phase Locked Loop Circuit, works. Uh, you may want to go back and look at that one first. But today we're just going to go through some of the practical uses of this circuit as it stands on its own, and how it's related to the VCO that comes before it. So as we've established in previous videos, the VCO feeds into the Synchrodyne's PLL. So these are normal together. So the PLL is driven by the pulse output of the oscillator. The main output of the PLL is up here in the top right, where it says PLL out. The main job of the PLL is to match the frequency of the incoming VCO. So first let's take a quick listen to the VCO again. So we've got the saw output of the VCO going into channel 1 of the Optimix. So this is just the saw output. We can change the pitch, frequency, down well into sub-audio rates, up into ultrasonic. So that was the saw VCO going into channel 1 of the Optimix. Going into channel 2 we have the PLL out which sounds like a pulse wave that has its width uh, down to a lower duty cycle. And note that the pitch and frequency of the PLL will track as I change the frequency of the oscillator. Because like I said, they are normal together. So since we have both of them plugged into the Optimix, let's listen to them together. As they are now, they should be in unison. So here's our saw wave, and I'm adding in the PLL circuit. So the both of them together, we've got the two waves at the same frequency. Now we can turn our attention to the top three knobs, which are the multiplication and the division. So these are essentially clock dividers and multipliers that work best at audio rates. One thing I've tried to get good results of and haven't is using the PLL at the top of the Synchrodyne as a clock multiplier for sub-audio signals for like a standard clock where you want two or four divisions. Um, that doesn't seem to work as well. I haven't been able to dial that in. But as an audio rate divider or multiplier, it does a very good job. So. Let's listen to both of them together, and we'll start with the multiplication knob in the middle. So there's our saw wave. I'm adding in the synchrodyne. Now let's change it so we're at a different multiplication factor. So you can hear that they come up at different musical intervals, and the same is true for the clock divider. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, following a static frequency is not that hard for a PLL circuit. The trick is when things start changing over time. So over here we have our trusty SQ1. The clock output is going up to a MADS, uh, and channel 1 is going to both of the channels of the Optomix. And I'm using that just because listening to constant VCO drone uh, gets on your nerves. So you'll hear what I mean in a second. The CV control from the SQ1 is going to go into the 1 volt per octave input on the oscillator. Then let's just listen to the saw wave input from the oscillator. Turn that down. Okay. So there is our sequence. And our synchrodyne should be following at the same speed, so let's turn that up. Now let's turn up one of these multiplication factors. So you can hear at the lower frequencies you get sort of this kind of thud, but at higher frequencies you get a nice musical interval. So with the clock multiplier it's going higher than the original signal coming from the VCO. Up here it's two octaves. If 
if you go up to times four, you should be at one active. And the same holds true for the division. Let's turn this up a little bit so you can hear that better. Great. So these two knobs can be used to create musical intervals. The one on the far left, we're not going to talk about until we get to the filter, because what this does is multiply the incoming frequency by an absurd rate. So so already we're at that kind of really high ear piercing tone. And we basically move up into past the audio range. So why is this here? We'll talk about that next time when we get into the filter. So that covers the top row of knobs. What we have next are the tracking speed and the damping control. And just like everything in audio, it's not dampening, it's damping. You dampen a sponge, you damp a signal. Now keep in mind that because I have the expand installed, we have CV control for PLL1 of the tracking speed and the damping. So that's not normally available on here. They're only manual controlled here. And when we have a signal plugged into these, uh, these become attenuators. So let's start up our sequence again, and I'm going to open up the envelope a little bit so you can kind of hear it better. So with the tracking speed and the damping control uh, roughly near the middle, you're going to have a uh, pretty standard performance of the Synchrodyne. And what we're worried about is how the Synchrodyne overshoots or undershoots as it tracks the pitch. You can already hear there's a little bit of slew in the signal, and we can add more of that by increasing the damping. So you can hear at the larger intervals that it sort of has this slew effect. And all the way up, it basically becomes static. The same is true if you lower the tracking speed. So each of them have a function as far as getting the signal to respond faster or slower to the incoming rate. If we were to turn the track speed all the way up and lower the damping, we basically have a more uncontrolled version of the circuit that can lead to unexpected results. So now as the circuit tries to match it, but without any damping, it tends to overshoot and come back. Which can sound pretty cool if you're mixing it in with the base of the sequence um, as sort of a background oscillator. What's also cool is that with the Synchrodyne Expand installed, we have voltage control over the track speed and the damp control. So, like I mentioned in a previous video, I don't know why they're flipped. So this is the CV input for the damp control, and this is the CV input for the track speed. So that's where you can get a lot more variation. So for that, what I'll do is I'm going to take a random signal out of the Woggle Bug, the smooth random voltage, and I'm going to put that into damp. And then we'll play that same uh, sequence again, and you can hear the change that that has. So you can get these really cool kind of variations by messing with the track speed of the Synchrodyne PLL circuit. As it moves into the ranges where it's more slewed to the ranges where it's acting faster. And then we'll take an LFO signal 
and we'll plug that into the damp control, operating at a completely different rate. We'll speed that up a little bit. So that's the original signal, again, mixing with the PLL. So this is just the PLL. So let's take those out. Bring in the original signal again. So that's pretty neat. But what's cool about the Synchronine is that the PLL circuit can be used completely independently of the VCO. So what we can use is a different oscillator as its input. So right now the oscillator section is normal to the PLL. But by using this clock input, we can use an entirely different signal. So for this one, we're going to set up a new patch using the uh, second oscillator of the DPO, which is right above the Synchrodyne here. All right, let's see if I can do this without messing it up too badly here. So here we have the sine wave output of the DPO going into channel one of the Optimix. We have the square wave output going to the clock input of the Synchrodyne. And then the PLL output is going into the second channel of the Optimix. So we can again mix the two signals to hear them combine together. So let's just hear how that sounds as is. So the square wave output from the DPO tends to work really well for uh, using the PLL in. But now you can see that since we're using a out external input for this clock input, uh, we now have free use of the VCO for uh, yet another sound source. So we could tune it to a different interval so we could have uh, basically make up harmonies and chords by having our main oscillator tuned to one pitch, this tuned to an interval beyond that, and this playing a different interval for some pretty interesting sound sources. Also of interest on the Synchrodyne, um, and I'll move this control, move this cable real quick. We have the clock input, and then we have the phase delta output. So the phase delta output is going to sound a lot like the um, PLL output. The interesting thing, though, is it doesn't change pitch uh, when you modify the multiplication or division on this PLL circuit. So we're going to listen to that now. And we'll put our clock back in. So right now it's going to act like a unison pitch for the input signal. If we change these controls, the frequency doesn't change, but we can get interesting timbre changes. variation on that. So I've taken out the original sine wave and now we're just listening to the phase delta output. So the big bit difference to remember is that the phase delta output does not change frequency or pitch based on the multiplication or division. The last control that's probably one of the harder ones to understand is the influence control right here. Uh, it's not very well documented in the manual, it just says that it acts directly with the track speed and damping controls and stabilizing the frequency of the PLL. So for lack of direct control over these two parameters that you get with the Synchrodyne Expand, um, I believe that this controls both of them in some ways that aren't necessarily intuitive. Uh, so it really benefits from having a control voltage that comes in that's attenuated. So for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use output 4 of uh, a different maths. And that's going to go in here. And I've attenuated it so there's a very small control voltage going in. Uh, because it doesn't seem like this acts like an attenuator for the input. Rather, it just changes the range at which the control voltage that comes to the influence jack affects these two controls. Let's listen to what it sounds like. So here it is without any influence control. And I'm going to put in the positive only control voltage from the MADS uh, directly in now. 
So as the math cycles up and down, you can kind of hear the effect it has on the pitch. So it seems to directly control the pitch that's coming out of the PLL um, with the rising and falling signals. If we were to decrease the MAD cycle to audio rates, you do get a little bit of an FM signal in there, uh, but it's subtle at best. So I don't find that control to be as useful, at least in the applications I've found, uh, as much as I have the track speed, the damp CV controls over here. Um, and then using this to create sort of a, a harmony or related tone to the signal you're putting into it. Hopefully that helps demystify a little bit of the PLL circuit. Um, you've got multiplication and division of incoming audio rate signals, and you can create some pretty neat timbres, uh, especially once you start using CV control over the uh, damp and track speed. By itself, it can be a useful utility. Um, obviously, some of the main functions of the Synchrodyne Expander are going to be for the VCO and especially the filter, which we have yet to get to. Um, but the PLL and the fact that you can get to various parameters of the PLL as well as audio outputs can make it a useful utility uh, to add different timbres to your oscillators uh, and sequences. So again, the PLL is here to track the pitch and frequency of an incoming oscillator audio rate signal and you have control over the response of it and how fast it can track uh, using these controls. Hopefully you found this helpful and when we come back we'll start finally talking about the filter.